everyone. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. And today we're talking with actress Megalyn Etchikunwoke, who stars in the new hit comedy Night School. In the film, Megalyn plays Lisa, a successful businesswoman who finds love with her fiance, Teddy, played by Kevin Hart. The issue is that Teddy is lying about his success and secretly attending Night School in order to land his dream job. Hilarity ensues, of course, which explains why Night School is already a hit at the box office. Let's take a look. Put your hands together for Megalyn Etchikunwoke. Thank you. I'm sure you've seen that trailer so many times, but I love that you're still laughing. I'm still laughing. It's so silly. I feel the same way. It's like I've seen it, and I'm just like, it's so silly, and it just was so refreshing. First, let's talk about, though, it's been a hit. It raised $28 million, or got $28 million this weekend, which is, like, pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised, but it's definitely fun to be a part of something. I've never been a part of something that's, that's done that, those kinds of numbers, so it's exciting. And how does that feel for you to be a part of this? I mean, it's going to continue to get money, and I think people are going to see it more and more. And it is, it's such a smart and funny movie, but also has a lot of heart, you know? Kevin Hart. It's Kevin Hart. Full of heart. <laughs> heart, heart, heart. It does have a lot of heart. And, and, and that's one of the things I love about it the most. Everyone I know who's seen it says that they felt heartwarmed afterwards. They laughed, and they felt like, oh, some people were inspired and some people were yeah. just felt like it was a nice respite from some of the heavier things that are going on in in cinema yeah. media etc yeah because it's really about a guy who gets a ch second chance and i feel like we don't see stories about these americans that often where maybe they didn't go to high school or maybe they couldn't finish high school or you know everybody has their own life journey but it kind of shows that you can still pull yourself up and do something which I think is just like a very inspiring story yeah and also that you can still be loved that yeah. you don't that it's not about necessarily having the car and the watch and the job and the jewelry that uh maybe you're lovable just the way you are yeah. And speaking of love, your character Lisa is Teddy or Kevin Hart's love interest. So tell us a little bit about Lisa. Uh, Lisa is a very independent woman. Um, she's self made, she's college educated, um, she's very creative, she runs her own business, and she is in love with Teddy. And he might not tick off all those boxes, but she still really loves him. Uh, regardless, and um, I, one of my favorite things about the love story is that he he takes the journey of self discovery and realizes that he that she really does love him just the way he is, and that he never needed to overcomplicate it and just just needs to accept it. So yeah, I think that's refreshing, and you don't see that often. It's usually the other way around. So have you seen that with any of your friends or people you know where it's like you don't have to. Put on all oh, this yeah. facade. I'm sure if you've lived in LA, I've heard that's something that happens oh, out there a yeah. lot. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Just because there's, especially in entertainment, because there's no real formula um, for how you go about it, and everyone's journey is different. Everyone's financial situation is different, um, especially in the arts. It's you, you know, either you're good or you're not, or you're you have money or you don't. But it doesn't make mean that you're not talented. So yeah. I've seen that a lot. So how did you uh, get tapped to be a part of this project? Um, I wouldn't say I was tapped. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I became a part of this project. The way I've become a part of any project, you have to like work for it. I had to audition a couple of times, meet the director, um, and just do a good job. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Did you have to do chemistry reads with Kevin, and what were those like? Um, I did not. But I have done chemistry reads with him in the past for other projects that I didn't get to be a part of. So um, maybe, maybe he was like, oh, okay, <laughs> maybe it'll work. And uh, this cast is so dynamic. Uh, there's just so many hilarious comedic people in this cast. So what was it like on set? Because I'm always wondering, like, there's so many funny people. Is it, like, really hype on set or was it kind of calm? Very hype, yeah. very funny, very hard to stay <laughs> in character, very hard not to ruin a take, uh, bursting out laughing, um, because Kevin is, is, everyone's hilarious. I mean, it's really an all-star comedy cast. Yeah, so I, I'm like, I can't believe I get to be a part of it. Yeah. That's what, I mean, obviously we have 
Tiffany and Kevin. And then when we get into the classroom setting, um, I was talking to Kevin Hart when he was here last week. Romney Malco, for me, was like this unassuming character that I just really connected with for some reason. I love him so much. He's so talented. Um, it was so cool watching him create that character because what you saw in the movie was not on the page. He created all of that, that really specific character stuff. Um, a lot of those lines, <laughs> like, he's like, whoo, it's hard being woke. <laughs> I think that's one of my favorite improv lines of his. Um, and I heard when he was brushing his bald head, like that yeah, was definitely not in the script. That was not in the script. Uh, all of the best stuff from his character he just ca he came up with and just like created this really fully rounded character that was so funny. Yeah. And you've done a lot of different roles in the past, um, but being around all these comedy people, did you pick up anything new or did you learn anything new about improv or just the, the process? Yes, definitely. Um, and especially because I, my character isn't necessarily funny. I'm more of the straight man kind of grounding the emotional stakes of the movie and um so but I do love comedy and I always enjoy getting to do it and watching these guys at the the top of their game I I yeah it's it was cool to sit back and watch and learn yeah there's also so many little surprises in the movie as far as like casting so Yvonne Orji I didn't know was in the film and obviously I'm a huge fan of Insecure and I feel like she's just like the best friend that everybody wants to have yes <laughs> Molly forever I know right yeah yeah she was great I'm very much a Molly in my life I think too which is why I love her so much yeah I love her yeah so uh has this movie made you want to do more comedies then uh yes yeah. um well I've always wanted to do comedy I've never been um more attracted to drama or I think comedy is it's it's kind of its own thing it's it's its own art form and if you can do it I think it's really it's kind of special because it's it's really hard it's it's yeah it's a difficult art form so, yeah. so yeah. this movie's called night school but what were you like in high school <laughs> high school what was I like in high school I if I could describe myself in one word I was very nerdy um, I was already acting professionally, um, but kind of just starting out, and I was very heavily involved in the theater department. So um, I guess I w I'm what you would call a theater geek. That's what I was. <laughs> yeah, I was in every play, every musical. Um, all of my extracurricular activities involved theater, acting, dancing, right. was very... It was very theatrical. <laughs> so the grades were good, though. You didn't they need to were, go to night school. I I did graduate from high school. Okay, barely. <laughs> <laughs> I feel but like I did yeah. it. <laughs> I was in the same boat. It's like I just wanted to get out. Um, so you mentioned that you did theater, and you're doing some more theater now in New York and Apologia, right? Yeah, it's called Apologia. Oh, just joking. <laughs> but it, it reads like Apologia, <laughs> yeah. and I'll be honest, I thought that's how it was pronounced, but that's... Apologia. The playwright quickly corrects everybody. Yeah. It's called Apologia. He's English, and I think it's more of a... a it's a literary term that they use in England. I... I or it's like aluminum. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, really exciting. It's my, my stage debut um, this October. Well, this is October in two weeks, October 16th at the Roundabout. Um, really cool cast. Stalker Channing is leading us. Hugh Dancy, um, Talene Monahan, um, uh, John Tillinger. It's a small cast, but a really, really cool play. Really funny. So, what is it that you love about theater? Because it sounds like something that you've loved doing since you were a kid. Oh yeah, um, it's it's completely different than doing film or television. I think um, one of the biggest things is is the control that you get to have over the outcome of of the project, or you know, you you kind of create your performance, and it's got a beginning, middle, and an end, and you are completely in control of all of it when you're on stage. Um, so it's really fulfilling in that way, um, and it's just also just you're just flexing different muscles. It's just it's completely different, and it can be really exhilarating performing in front of a live audience. Um, and it, yeah, I I love stretching myself in that way. Are you nervous since this is your big kind of off-Broadway New York debut? 
terrified. Yeah. <laughs> How do you deal with that? Because I just think about the pressure, but... Yeah, it's a lot of pressure, but you you know, you have... There's a lot of rehearsal, and it's not just you, which is... Well, one of the things, like, I don't know how Kevin and, and Tiffany, these stand-up comedians, it's just you, a microphone, and, and a stage. And that seems very terrifying to me. But this is, um, you know, there's a cast, and, a, and you're telling a story. So it's really, it's really well rehearsed. It's curated. And so you have... You have time to build the confidence, but it's still really, really scary. Um, you just have to believe that you're there because you should be and that you're good and, and, and do your best. And then you have many nights to just keep tweaking and perfecting. So that's, so that's cool. And I saw it's a, it'll be going through December. So if people want to come check it yeah. out, they have a couple months to sort of yeah. make it to the... Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, it sounds like you are a little bit of a risk taker, though. Like, I'm not, I'm not worried about you because I saw that you're training for the New York City Marathon. Yeah. Oh, my God, you're brave. <laughs> what inspired that? Um, well, it's something I've always wanted to do. And if I'm being honest, Kevin was doing it while we were shooting night school last year. And I was like, I could do that, too. If he could do it, I could do it. So um, and it's something I've always wanted to do. And so I was, I was honestly inspired by Kevin and a lot of other people I know who've done it. Um, and I just, I, uh, I got the opportunity because earlier this year I traveled to Kenya with an organization called AMREF and, um, I just saw the incredible work that they were doing and I, I wanted to see if I could, uh, and a lot of the, a lot of the marathon runners come from Kenya and it was something I was planning on doing and then they said, well, if you're going to do it anyway, you might as well do it for AMREF. And I thought, yeah, that's the perfect reason to do it because I don't know if I if I was just doing it for myself I might have backed out by now because it's really hard and um, because you have a show yeah that you're working on and which and the, and the and the play came after I had already signed up so I couldn't back out but it's actually been really wonderful because um both things are doing a doing a play uh a Broadway play is also like running a marathon so the two things uh lend themselves to each other in a in a nice way and I have to be really disciplined and really focused, and it's it, it's a good thing. I was gonna say I would imagine you are probably the most disciplined person right now. Um, You're like promoting a film, yeah. working on the theater, and then also training for a marathon. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's requiring a lot of focus, but I actually really I love it. It's I'm kind of thriving because um, sometimes you need these challenges to kind of like push you to the next level. And it's always more fun to be doing something that you actually enjoy. Yeah, and I love of. everything I'm doing. I, I truly do. I feel so lucky. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think now's a good time to go to the audience for a couple of questions. Uh, who do we have first? Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you for coming. Oh, of course. I was wondering what your favorite part about being in this movie was. Uh, my favorite part was probably one of my favorite parts was probably being taught how to cook fried chicken by Tiffany Haddish. <laughs> Honestly, she, um, she realized that I didn't really know how to cook and that I wasn't really interested. And she's like, you need to learn how to cook something for your man. And she had a dinner party for me and taught me how to cook fried chicken. So I'm better for it. Thank you, <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany. Next question. Hi, um, I wanted to know, was it hard uh, trying, uh, retaining um, a straight face on set in, in front of Kevin Hart during the scenes? Because I feel like being on set with him, it would be just difficult for you not to laugh out loud during uh, uh, shots. Uh, yes, it was incredibly difficult. Um, I'm sure I ruined a couple of good takes just because I couldn't keep a straight face. <laughs> Um, and I, I would also ruin his takes because even though I wasn't on camp, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't stop laughing. Um, he's very, very funny. He's a very fun, funny person to be around. So yeah. Yeah. The scene that pops into my head when you said that was the, when he gets blown into the car. Yeah. Like I can only imagine how many takes where he's just like, oh, ah, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All of and that. Everything. One more question. Hi. So I Hi. had the opportunity to watch night school this past weekend with my mom and like literally every scene you or tiffany was in she was like oh my god i love that outfit so i wanted to know like how close is like your character style to yours because i see now Ooh, that's a good question um 
Well, I did work very closely with the costume designer, but I always try to make any of my characters different from me. I try to kind of like shape shift into them. Um, so definitely like a lot of the colors she was wearing, I definitely would wear all of those colors. Um, she ha She's um, a little bit more of a businesswoman than I am. She has she has a job that she goes to every day. She has an office. So I don't really dress like that in my daily life. Um, I'm usually in like sweats because I'm just like, oh, I got to go run. Then I got to go to the theater. And the theater, I got to wear a wig. And I'm, I'm in pajamas a lot lately. But um, uh, Lisa is definitely very, very stylish, very a lot more put together than I would say I am, but I loved everything she wore and I, I picked everything very specifically for every scene with the costume designer. Um, so yeah, if, if I was her, that's what I would wear. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, like I said, night school was a really fun ride. I laughed out loud, LOL, that's in real life, uh, several times. So if you guys haven't seen it, it is in theaters now, guys. Give it up for Megalyn Echi. Thank you. Thank you so much.